Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to yet another in-depth review here on NNT Auto Reviews. My name is Tyler sitting behind the camera giving you guys all these walk around videos that you know and love. Today we are checking out an all new very nice looking SUV here. It is of course the all new 2019 Chevy Blazer in the RS trim level. Alright, so here we have the window sticker on the new Blazer. Now I'm not going to go over a whole lot because it's going to take a while because there's a lot of information on the window sticker. But over here we have all of our standard equipment, which you can pause the video and get more information. Then we also have over here all of our options, um, our options list over here. So we have the Advanced Convenience and Driver's Confidence Package number 2 which comes with all of these features here and it's quite a large package coming in at $3,575 definitely makes up for it because there's a whole bunch of features that come in that package then we also have the sun and wheels package coming in at $2,495 of course gives you that pan panoramic sunroof and the 21 inch wheels we have just over $6,000 in pricing a $1,195 destination fee and a total sticker price for this particular vehicle standing at $50,840. We also have some fuel economy information over here. There is no um, safety ratings quite yet. This car just hit the showrooms, so we're going to have to wait just a little bit for that. And then we also have our parts content over here where I'm very happy to uh, report to you guys that 54% of the parts come from either the US or Canada and then or Canada rather and then 22% come from Mexico. We have the final assembly point is in Mexico. However, the engine and transmission are also are sourced from the United States. Now, taking a walk over to the side of the Blazer, you can really see its main character line right over here leading up into the spoiler over there. And we are looking at the graphite metallic paint color. There are nine different colors available, at least on the RS trim. And our wheelbase stands at 112.7 inches. So walking around that you could see the back of the all new Chevy Blazer. Very stylistic back here, of course, just like the front and the side. And you can choose between uh, either front wheel drive or all wheel drive of course this one is all wheel drive being that we are up here in the northeast uh, it's very cold today about 25 degrees and the maximum towing for this car I'm pleased to announce is right around 4,500 pounds if you have the v6 and all wheel drive however if you get the front wheel drive option you'll be limited to right around 1,500 pounds which still isn't bad Alright, so the details of the exterior on the all-new Chevy Blazer. And I'm really glad they decided to bring back the Blazer nameplate. Because everyone really knows what the Blazer is. And that's a pretty rugged SUV. Even for back then. Uh, when they used to make them in the early 2000s. And even earlier than that. But as far as lighting goes up here, we have our daytime running lights. And you can see them illuminated. They are powered by those LED bulbs. Pretty good looking. Then we have this really sharp uh, dark chrome accent that runs below the lights up there and runs a span of the grill housing the blacked out Chevy emblem. And if we take a look a little bit down south, we also have a our regular headlights. So it's powered with an HID bulb and those are used for both your high and low beams. That's all surrounded in a gloss black and you also have your turn signals down there as well. You'll notice that we have a lot of gloss black accents with the RS trim level. So even way down below, that's going to be all gloss black along with this very massive aggressive grille. The RS badging is up front. It's a little bit dirty but uh... This time of year it's getting very hard to keep your cars clean since we're up here in New England and there's salt all over the roads. 
so pretty angular hood over here on the side and then in the center it almost makes a sort of cowl induction sh uh, shaped hood which gives it a pretty neat appearance again paying homage to uh, back then when the blazer used to be out we also have lots of gloss black surrounding the wheels going all the way down the side and speaking of our wheels they are gloss black themselves uh, 21 inch aluminum wheels they look really fitting on this car they are optional uh, 20 inches are standard on the RS we have the locking um, lug nut in there we also have ventilated disc brakes and our tires up front measure 265 45 so really really neat roof line uh, surrounding the windows it goes up like so and we can follow this line all the way from the driver's door all the way up to the top we have our mirrors over here and if we flip around we could see both the turn signal indicators and the blind spot warning come back a little bit we have the door handles with the smart key entry we also have the blazer badging all in gloss black moving back we have the door handles for the back our gloss black roof rails over there our fuel filler is on the driver's side which helps out so we have the same wheel and tire setup back here and also ventilated disc brakes for the back too we have a neat looking spoiler back here with some extensions again gloss black and this part over here is also that black color so if you get even a brighter color like a red it'll kind of make a floating roof design appearance we also have the antenna back there the third wiper Let's take a quick walk back you could also see and we have some nice tan lamps back here pretty neat design the LED brake lights are also present we have the blazer all-wheel drive emblem as well as our gloss black down below everything below here is all the gloss black we have our parking sensors and our dual exhaust outlets which looks pretty neat we have the blacked out Chevy emblem and we also have two cameras back here one for your rear view camera and one for your camera mirror and your trunk release is right over here so I have the RS badging So before we get on the inside, I want to explain how this smart key entry system works. Uh, all GM products are pretty much the same. We're just going to use this little chrome button right there to lock and unlock the vehicle. So just make sure you have the key fob in a close, close proximity of the vehicle and you don't even have to use that key fob to lock and unlock the doors. Now, opening the door, we have a pretty large front door for the driver. There is one color option for the RS Trumo, and it's of course this black with the red accenting. Now up here, we have pretty soft to the touch materials. Down here we have this leather, right over here where the arm is going to rest. We have this nice trim work over here, a gloss trim. We have these metallic handles, lock on lock, and then we also have our memory buttons with the easy exit button. Uh, the easy exit, when you press that button it'll put the seat back 
and tilt the steering wheel upwards for an easy exit out of the vehicle. We have all of our window and mirror controls over here. We have our uh, trunk button, so full power trunk. We can choose uh, to press the button and open a max way, or we can uh, reduce it to open just a three quarters way if you have a low garage or something like that. Or you can just turn the uh, power tailgate off, so you could just lift the tailgate up manually. We have a couple of pockets over here in the door, one that's a bottle holder and a little bit more storage towards the back. And this could be like a little storage tray for change or what have you. We also do have the optional 8 speaker Bose audio system. Uh, 6 speakers will come standard if you don't opt for that. Taking a look at the left of the dash, we have lots of red accents on the inside. So around all the air vents on the, um, on the top of the dashboard. All these red accents make for a really sporty looking interior. We have our gauge dimmer over here, our lighting controls, our parking brake, so you just press it in uh, to release or um, engage it. We have our pedals down here with a nice big dead pedal. And our floor mats, once they are installed, they will button in. You can also take a look down here at our nice soap place, a Chevrolet. We have full powered seats over here with the two-way lumbar, so we have in and out. And then these seats, pretty interesting seats. Really different uh, than any other seat that I've seen. We have um, perforated seats, but as you can see, within the perforations, it's colored red. So we have the red stitching and a little bit of red piping on the seat. Just a really, really attractive looking seat. Well, for the next portion of the video, we're gonna hop in, we'll start the car up, and we'll check out the driver's cockpit. Alrighty, so here's the key fob for the vehicle. It's the same pretty nice key fob that Chevy's been using the past couple of years on their new products. You know, pretty nice with the Chevy emblem on the back. There's a physical key on the inside if you need to use it. We have the uh, panic alarm, the trunk release, remote start, and then lock, unlock. There's some chrome accents on the front of the key as well. But all you need to do to start the car is make sure the key fob is within the interior. Put your foot on the brake and press the engine start stop button. Alrighty. So we can start off this portion of the video with the steering wheel. Now, very nice new steering wheel. It's almost like the one in the new Silverado, which we have yet to check out. I've been waiting. But then I saw this come out, and I figured, hey, this just came out, so we'll do a video on this one. Definitely expect a video on the new Silverado coming up shortly, uh, as soon as I can. But, however, the steering wheel in this car is obviously heated. It's doing its job very nicely today on this 25-degree day. The heated control is right over here. It is nicely leather wrapped with the red stitching on the inside of the wheel. We have some bright work going around the buttons and towards the bottom of the steering wheel. But as far as buttons, we have our cruise control over here. We have our forward collision warning or distance indicator. We can turn that on and off. Buttons right in the steering wheel, so that's pretty convenient. There's also buttons on the back of the steering wheel, so I'll see if I could show you on the other side. Yep, you can see the buttons right over here. There's a pair of buttons just like it on either side of the steering wheel. So on this side, it'll change between your presets. And then on this side in the back, it'll change your audio volume. But back to the face of the steering wheel, we have our voice commands over here. We also have our phone controls. And then we also have buttons for the digital speedometer 
up there. All right, so the digital portion in the middle of the gauges does have a few different modes. This one is considered the touring mode. We'll go through the different modes just to see how they look. Uh, however, there are there's a decent amount of information within the uh, the screen there that's very useful. So again, we could use these buttons right over here, the squirrel knob, and then you could press down to select on this uh, little roller right there. This is our basic stream, uh, screen right here. We have some trip information, so our trip A, trip B, uh, different various things like the fuel range. And then going back to our trips, then we could use the uh, left hand button and it'll bring up some more options on the side. So we could bring up our audio screen. Then we could use these arrows to change your station or uh, your source. We could uh, display our navigation. So if you had something hooked up with the navigation, the screen will pop up actually in the center over there, which is pretty neat. We have our phone screen over there too, and we have various options. Speed warnings and all that good stuff. Then we could also select our different um, display themes. So this is the sport theme. So we can see we have a very large um, uh, speed readout up there that speed actually goes up to 170 so as we change the different menus it looks just a little bit different in the sport um, gauge mode however other than the digital uh, portion in the center we have um, three different analog gauges. One over here is our tachometer. We also have our fuel gauge over here and then our temperature gauge up there. And then we have our voltometer over here and then a different um, temperature gauge over there. Taking a look up here we have a couple of speakers up at the top of the dash nice soft touch material up here we have our engine start stop button right there our hazards button and I also almost forgot to mention the stocks over here or this one over here is used for your, your front and rear wipers and this one over here are your turn signals high beams and you can also turn on and off your automatic high beams so a car does have automatic high beams so taking a look over here, we have the nice new MyLink system. Uh, this is a home screen. You could also choose between a different home screen. So if you press this one here, it'll bring you to a sort of a split screen between your radio, your phone, and your navigation. We can start off by pressing the audio screen. So we see we have all of our presets up top, what's playing in the center, and then our different sources. We have shortcuts down here our phone screen here. Um, once we pair a phone more um, more features will become available. We have our nav screen. Very nice graphics for the navigation. We can zoom in and out over here and we can enter our address over here, set up a work and a um, home. We also have our Wi-Fi hotspot settings. We have different users so we could sign in and create profiles for different people that use the vehicles that way once you get in um, all of your settings are up to date with the person that's driving the car we have all of our different settings over here so these are all of our system settings we also have our app settings so we can control our Android Auto and Apple CarPlay and we also have vehicle settings
We can download different apps over here and we can also control the climate. So we have that dual zone climate control. Um, we can adjust our temperatures over here, fan speeds up top, and then um, different settings down below and then where you want the air to blow, right in the center. We have our OnStar services and then all of our different camera settings. So this car does have a 360 degrees view camera system. Also one thing I'd like to point out is this car is one of the best um, looking camera systems in the industry. It's so clear. Take a look at the quality. It's probably clearer than the camera that I'm filming with right now. So we have the top down view over here. Then we also have the front camera right there. And then we have all of our different um, camera settings right at the bottom. So we could choose what we want to see over here between the front and rear camera. So that's the front, that's the rear. We can also have a wide angle rear view camera. So we have two different angles. We can also zoom in to see what's on the front of us. So it's directly in front of us. Say there's, you know, maybe a bicycle or something in front. You can see that perfectly. We also have the uh, 360 degrees view with the in, like the 3D system, which is pretty neat. It's not all that great, but it's definitely there, and it works pretty decent. Uh, as you can see, it's a little bit distorted on the side over there, but it still works pretty good. We also have our curb view, so you can see what's on each side of the front wheel, and also what's on each side of the rear wheel. We also have our trailer hookup camera. We can also choose this to put on and off our guidance lines. We can also choose to have the surround vision on as well. So, and the guidance lines are active so they move when you move the steering wheel. Pretty neat camera system, very advanced. So I definitely like that. We also have some physical buttons down here, obviously the volume knob, uh, skipping and then back and then physical home. We have our glove box release as well as the traction control off buttons over there. And you know, I really like the screen where it's placed. Um, not a big fan of the screens that are on top of the dash and kind of sticking up where you're trying to view, but I do like the shape and the position of this screen. I think it's very nice looking. Down here we have all of our climate control settings. So again, it's a dual zone climate control. Now this, in connection with the Camaro, you can actually adjust the temperatures with the surrounding of the, um, the air vents over here, which is pretty neat. You can also turn them on and off. This right here. We have our fan speed and defrosters in the center. And we have a whole line of buttons over here, which is always good to have physical uh, climate control buttons. So we have cooled seats for both front passengers, heated seats for both front passengers, and we also have our uh, digital um, temperature readouts to either side. We have all of our different uh, where you want the air to blow, automatic AC, and then the recycling. And you can just turn the climate control right off right there. We have a couple of uh, power outlets, so the USB and the micro uh, USB, I guess you could say. And you also have the wireless charging pad right here. Looks like it could fit a pretty decent sized phone. We have a couple of cup holders in the center. We have a pass through. And we also have the gear selector for the 9 speed automatic transmission. Now you will get a 9 speed no matter what engine you choose, the 4 cylinder or the 6 cylinder. Uh, just the transmission is a little bit beefed up for the extra power of the six cylinder. So if we put our foot on the brake, we get to start selecting gears like always. We have reverse. Once it comes into reverse, the backup camera and the 360 degrees camera will pop up. We have neutral drive in the low mode. Then we could also start selecting gears manually on the side with the plus on the top and the uh, minus on the bottom. Nice gear selector though, soft leather on the boot, some stitching and the RS logo right there. 
we have a nice little terrain response system over here so we could choose between you know, if we want just for it to be two-wheel drive then we can also select it to be four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive we have a sport mode which is pretty cool with the RS we have a um, off-road mode and then also a trailering mode so pretty neat to see that they give you some options here obviously you'd like to use it um, put it in two-wheel drive for just regular driving then you could also lock it into four-wheel drive if it's snowing out or whatever over here we have some buttons for the parking sensors so say if you're towing a trailer you want to turn those parking sensors off so they're not going off constantly you could definitely do that and we could also turn on and off our some of our driver's assistance functions like the lane keeping assist Over here we have a nice soft center console with some red stitching. You can lift that up. We have a pretty good amount of space in there. And we also have a couple of more power outlets with looks like an SD card inlet and a 12 volt power outlet. We have a little bit of storage right in front of the center console as well. Alright, so moving up to the rear view mirror. It's a pretty nice looking frameless mirror. Pretty neat shape to it too. And see out the back pretty good right but then we also see down here that we have a little tab for it looks like a day and night mode if we flip that tab the rear view camera mirror pops up so it's actually a camera that acts as your rear view mirror so again we have the mirror the camera on right now and if we flip it back you know you could see pretty decent but if you flip it to the camera you could see everything there's no blind spots or anything so I think that's a pretty neat feature and I'm pretty sure that's probably the way the automotive industry is going to go with the mirrors. Up here we have a uh, sunglass storage console. We have our garage door home links up here. We have some LED illumination to either side. We also have our sunroof and sunshade controls. We have some lighting and emergency controls up here too as well as our OnStar. Up here we have a nice uh, mirror with lights on the visor and as part of the sun and wheel package we have the very nice panoramic sunroof of course we can control the shade right over here it blocks 100 percent of the light then we could also vent or uh, put the roof all the way back and also very nice black headliner for this car too. Alrighty, so for the next portion of the video, I'm gonna adjust the driver's seat to a comfortable driving position for my 5'10 self. And we're gonna check out the rear quarter of this car. We'll see how much room we have and also the amenities back there. So back here we have a pretty nice sized door, we have the same pretty nice materials as up front so soft to the touch over here and then the leather on where your arm's going to rest. We have a nice door handle, also the window control and the heated seats for back here. We also have a speaker and a storage pocket on the side of the door. Same nice seats as up front, so we have that pretty cool pattern with the perforations we can also fold the headrests like they are now or flip them up if you have passengers you can also fold the seats down with this uh, grab handle right here they will fold down automatically and you just pick them up nice and easy and put them back you could also slide the seats back and forth there's a little bar underneath there So depending if you want more leg room or more cargo room, if you want to slide those seats back and forth, you could definitely do that. So getting in, we have a very nice amount of leg room back here. Uh, plenty of room back here, really. Um, I'd say at least four inches of leg room back here, thanks to the little cutouts in the seat. Uh, we also have some um, air vents back here 
some chargers and a household charger too, the three prong. We have a little bit of storage in the back of the center console. Very, very small um, drivetrain hump. So you'll have no uh, problems with center passengers back here. Really quite a nice interior. I'm very impressed with this car. If we flip around, we have a little uh, armrest back here with a couple of cup holders. And you also have these nice little blind spot um, windows back here for when you're changing lanes. Also a blind spot warning will help you out with that. We have a coat hook back here and the grab handle and a little LED light. So just a really, really impressive all new car. Um, the Blazer, very, very impressive. Next, let's check out what the glove box has to offer on the passenger side. So on the passenger door, it's pretty much the same design, just a few less buttons, which I'm sure you can make out. We also have the sill plate on the passenger side, and the uh, front passengers also treated to power seats. The only thing they lose over the driver is the lumbar. Just a really, really very nice interior. And we could pop open the glove box electronically with this button right there. It'll drop down and reveal a pretty good amount of space in there. The plastic and the wheel locks in there, or your extra wheel nuts. We also have extra storage down here where you can maybe put your phone or whatever. So the blazer that we're looking at does have a full powered lift gate. It'll beep at you to just to let you know it's going up so nobody gets in the way. We have some pretty neat amenities back here once we open the um, tailgate. We have some cart cargo tie downs and we also have these tracks over here and we have this kind of bar system where we can move that back and forth and split up, split up our cargo. We can also see that there's LED lights and these handles back here. Once you pull those handles, the uh, rear seats will fold flat for either side. So you can see there's one on each side. If we open this up, we have our spare tire and jack. We also have some spots for a cargo cover. And our floor mats are also in this bag here. And to close the trunk, you could either close it manually if you want, over here, or press this button, and I'll go right on down. So there are two different fuel tank sizes for the all-wheel drive. You will be getting a 21.7 gallon fuel tank. And for front wheel drive, you'll have 19.4 gallons. Um, however, as equipped with the V6 and all-wheel drive, you should be seeing right around 18 miles a gallon in the city and 25 on the highway. Again, with the V6 and all-wheel drive. You also see we have a capless fuel filler. So now that both you and I know what the all new 2019 Blazer is all about, this video is coming to a conclusion and I thank you guys for watching and I hope you stay with us for future in-depth reviews.